One week after Yusuke, Izuku hadn't slept well. He wanted to but his other projects, he had to get his next project space ready before the planet got too far. Izuku texted Mei, and they agreed to meet up. When Izuku knocked on the door he saw the cat-like face of the vice representative Momoyo Irozu. Fist raised as if ready to knock. Ah. Uh, Momo started. What is it? Izuku asked. A few of us wanted to go to the mall. Momo said, we thought you might want to go since you've been so busy with work. Momo had honestly been confused about Midoriya's non-academic life. He always had been busy with one thing or another. He was friendly whenever the class met up and keep up with his duty as class president, but he spent a lot of time alone. He always wore something, comfortable was what she could describe his choice of shorts and muscle shirt whenever at the dorms. An outfit that screamed look at all the fucks I give about your opinion. I was gonna meet with me about her input on something. Izuku said. I, I see. I just thought, Momo rubbed the back of her head. Jarvis. Calling Miss Hatsune. Hey are you on your way? I wanna see the specs on this new baby of yours. Momo had a look in her eye of absolute confusion. Change of plans. Wanna make a run to the mall. We can grab a few things not in the school material line. Izuku said. But we can, Mei was cut off by the voice of her teacher she'll be right out. Great meet us at the gate. Izuku said rubbing his eyes. Momo just stared and blinked. Mei has some energy. Izuku said, a lot of energy. Momo slowly nodded and they headed off. Front entrance. Mei was already there by the time they walked over, and when they approached said, let's go get the supplies for our next baby. Baby a majority of the group shouted. Didn't know you had it in you Midoriya, Rupert. Tsu said. Deku, Katsumi fumed. Lucky bastard. Mineta said looking at me. Midoriya if you are having Iida started doing the hand chop thing, but Izuku stopped him. Iida, Mei calls her inventions her babies. Izuku said. So how many babies has Izuku made with you? Mina asked grinning. A lots actually. Mei said. And where do you make these babies? Shoko asked giving a small smile. In the lab, his garage, we even made a few on the beach. Mei said. Even Kasumi was snickering. So what's Deku like snicker making babies? Well he's usually the one that wants to take it slow, but I want to get as many out as I can. Mei said, he's really good at leading during it all, and makes sure we both put the most effort into each one. I don't want anything blowing up. Izuku said before his eyes widened and he groaned. Mina had fallen to the ground as she was bagging up. Toru said, hey Mei how supportive is Midoriya when making babies? Oh he's behind me all the way when we actually get into it. Mei said. Kasumi had gasped and had to lean on Jiro to keep from falling. Okay we can we go now? Izuku asked. Hey Mei do you guys play music while you two make one of your babies? Rupert. So you asked slow jazz. No mainly rock music. Mei said, some Draker the weekend really get the flow going. I have, one question. Ida adjusted his glasses and snickering, do you two wear proper safety equipment? I know making babies is fun, but protection is cheaper than snicker accidents. Oh yeah Midoriya makes sure we both have the proper protection when working on our babies. Mei said. Okay, we are officially deeming Midori the daddy of class 1 from now on. Mina said, all in favor of daddy Deku. I, A lapis? Mina asked. Nay. Izuku said. Majority vote. Mina said pumping her arms, daddy Deku stays. If I'm daddy then what's Momo? Little mama. Izuku asked. Class milf. Juro asked. Momo blushed. Okay, let's go. Momo said pushing everyone. Teacher's lounge. The staff were gathered around bagging up from the security footage of the interaction at the front of the school. This again. Aizawa shook his head. That's you got the title as class dad. Present Mick said grinning at Aizawa. What exactly is that? Vlad asked. Usually classes kind of create a family structure. Nezu said, it's something I've been taking notes on about human social reactions. Remember Eraser Daddy? Midnight asked. No, Vlad said. His hero rank obtained after his time in the military. Please don't, Aizawa said. The pause video showed problem child's face throughout the whole thing. Completely too tired to give a fuck. Well Hatsumi is getting along with class 1A. Now when can I move her into the one at dorms? Pao Loader asked. Why would you want to do that? Midnight asked. Hatsume seems to be a peak no explosions when Midoriya is around or she's talking about him. Power Loader said. So what's she slower without him? Aizawa asked. No, that fucker seems to just defuse her inventions. Power Loader shouted Aizawa can you please spare him? Please. Just for a few minutes a day. I'm getting tired of the smell of fried babies nearly every day. Please. Aizawa raised an eyebrow. I don't see why you can't just ask Midoriya to visit her. I can't. Power Loader said Midoriya is just as active as me, but he knows how to manage his time and energy. Well the only reason a transfer could happen would be if Mei's current dwelling was destroyed. Nezu said however I think waiting and watching is a better strategy. I have a few things that could make something happen partner. Snipe said. Meet me by the dumpster in 15 minutes. 
Howard Loader said. So anyone want to start betting on the dating pool? Midnight asked. No, Ectoplasm said. I'm good at the moment. Nezu sat taking a sip of tea. Mole. They had gone around to anywhere they wanted to. The girls often calling Izuku daddy much to the confusion of anyone within hearing range. So anyone want to try that Karik place? Mina asked. I've never done Karik. Achako said. Deku hasn't either. Kasumi said, he always stuttering he butchers every song. Actually I sing all the time. Izuku said. Who? Kasumi said. It's something that helps getting my voice to stop stuttering. Izuku said, I sing nearly every morning. Oh really? Jiro asked her earjacks curling. Why are you surprised? Izuku asked. If you actually get on stage I'd pay to see that. Kasumi said. Is it a real bet? Izuku asked. Let's make this interesting. Ichako said, everyone kick in five bucks. Everyone pulled out a five and she counted it, it wasn't that interesting. How have I never thought of that? Mina said. All oh, might. Iron Liberty was flying through test ground alpha. The suit made your problem with controlling it it was too, responsive. All Might had been thinking about things and it just did it. This seems fine until you realize this was linked to his phone, bank account and Jarvis. All Might had to keep his thoughts in line. The HUD was also taking some time to get used to. How does Midoriya handle all this in a fight? Sir actually has the HUD slowed down for you All Might. Georgia. All Might shouted crashing into a building. Jarvis. At your service Mr. Yogi. Jarvis said. Can you read my mind? All Might asked getting up. The helmet and glasses are linked to Stark industry servers. All Mr. Midoriya's notes on quirks and heroes are available at your request. Okay this is so confusing. Is there a way to dumb down the interface? All Might asked. I am able to change the loadout to vocal command, only however sir has memos for you that mental command is required, if you wish to operate the suit remotely. All Might watched as the display changed. It was an experience relearning a power suit. Would Midoriya have as much trouble when he finally passed on one for all? Tashi had put off giving Midoriya the cork out of sheer selfishness. You wish for All Might to leave the world as he entered. Jarvis said. I, yes. Tashi said. Sir has figured this. He also has been busy with the asteroid harvesting mission before the launch window closes. Jarvis said. Would you like to leave instructions on one for all, so I may assist sir after the transfer? I can't really help him. Tashi said sitting down, I was able to use the quirk at 100% as soon as I got it. Nana told me she hadn't gotten full use of it for years. I need someone that can actually help Midoriya. Tashi thought I need someone who knows about it, and knows how to train an all-for-one user, I need. Calling old man dot. No way Jarvis. All Might shouted cancel call. Cancel. Tashi. A voice said. Shit. I hate to reno, I uh. You need my help. The retired hero said talk. Now. God damn it Midoriya. Tashi thought. Noted. Line break. Bakunai's picked a song, and when Deku heard the song he had actually laughed. Really? Alright. Has he lost his mind? Can he see or is he blind? I looked over at Dracunai's and can't stop myself from nodding. Deku changed over the years, hell he changed a lot in senior year. The squishy nerd afraid of his own shadow was now. Boyfriend material. Dummy worms turned into pythons. She hadn't often seen him shirtless before, the change, but he definitely wasn't built like a. He was turned to steel. In the great magnetic field. When he traveled time for future of mankind. Hero. He was built like a hero. He's still quirkless. Nobody wants him. We do. Mei Hatsume. They just turned their heads. Mei hadn't paid much attention to people. She only really cared about building stuff. But since meeting Zuzu making her baby seemed better. She knew companies had teams, but she always invented alone. Nobody helps him. Dot. Nobody ever actually wanted to work with Mei on her babies. Was Zuzu like her? Was he alone making his? Now he has his revenge. Mei had heard the others in the class call Zuzu daddy. Why did that feel, right? Like it was something meant for it. Failure was the mother of success, but courage was the father. May remembered that line. Zuzu had courage, he picked a fight with the toughest hero just to test his baby. Mina. Heavy bones of lead, fills his victims full of dread. Midori was interesting. He did all kinds of stuff yet wanted to be a hero. He was probably the only one on earth with the stuff to make her an actual alien queen. The fact he could go from earth to space wearing the same suit was amazing. Mina had wanted to be an astronaut when she was little. The movies she watched, classics talking about living beyond their world were amazing. She cried the day she was told no one has been to space in hundreds of years. It was a dream she had buried. Until Midori showed her the actual hot recording of his satellite installation. Well Hatsume's satellite, but Midoriya was allowed to use it for space stuff. Then he had said he could turn her into a xenomorph. Mina had remembered the first time she saw that creature and wanted so badly to be just like it, minus the eating people. The fact he was technically a xenomorph from the lore she understood from the series. He was genetically tailored to be the toughest guy in the yard. 
he literally rebuilt himself to be a hero. Line break that night. Kasumi had approached Deku's door when she saw Raccoon eyes. What are you doing here? Kasumi asked. Just wanted to speak with Midori. Mina said. Yes same. Kasumi said shifting her gaze around. Uh Jarvis. Mina asked. Sorry Miss Ashido sir is currently in the support department with Miss Hatsume. What? Both shouted. Sir has a small window to launch Project Jiriko. Jarvis said. The fuck is Jiriko? Kasumi shouted. Classified. Jarvis said. Is he gonna come back soon? Mina asked. Unsure. Sir has all non-emergency calls blocked until 6 o'clock. Jarvis said. Kasumi gritted teeth. Not only was Deku not here, he was with Pinky doing, he knows what, and Raccoon Eyes was probably here to do the same thing she was. I'll just talk to him later. Mina said. Memo left for sir that you and Miss Bakugo wish to speak to him. Jarvis said. Thanks Jarvis. Mina said. Can you open the door? Kasumi asked, we won't take anything. One moment, dot sir has no restrictions on that. Mina rushed in to see what was there. Don't touch anything Raccoon Eyes. Kasumi shouted. I won't. Mina said looking around. Everything in here was meant for work. The computer, a mini holidable and a chair. This bed is so tiny. What kind of fun can you do here? Mina said rushing to it. Never have sex in your own bed. Quote sir. Jarvis said. Mina laid on it and a groan came out her mouth. It's like sleeping on a cloud. Kitsumi had her get up and tried it. Shit no wonder Deku's falls asleep so fast. Move over I'm sleeping here tonight. Mina said. Fuck no I'm staying here. Kasumi said. I call little spoon. Mina said. The Kasumi shouted as Mina got on the bed. Man your waist is so tiny. Mina said as her arms wrapped around Kasumi's waist. Hey watch those horns. Kasumi said. Don't worry I have plenty of practice not poking you. Mina said adjusting the blanket. What to? Kasumi asked. All might body pillow. Mina said. Same, surprise Deku doesn't have one. Or any of his fanboy shit. Kasumi said Jarvis. Yes Miss Bakugo. Does Midori have All Might Body Pillow? Mina asked. Checking Stark Hero Collection, one unopened official All Might Body Pillow Case. How many body pillow cases does Deku own? Year 1 Midnight Pillow Case, opened and used. First Edition Endeavor Pillow Case, unopened. Mount Lady Pillow Case, unopened. 2B Pillow Case, damaged and pending replacement. What's the most expensive thing in his collection? Mina asked. Signed All Might Transparent Chocolate Bar Event Card. Estimated value, touch this and I will gut you like a fish. Current location, classified. What's the second most valuable? No book signed by, 0.547 different heroes with photo and video evidence of authenticity. Jarvis said, not available for purchase or trade. Estimated value of notebook, 314,982 United States dollars. Wait Deku's autograph book. The one he got from a cereal box when we were five. Kasumi asked. Damn when we call Midori a fan we clearly don't give him enough credit. Mina said yawning night. Hey I'm not sleeping with your raccoon eyes. Kasumi shouted, but a pink hand reached up. Shoo. Queens need sleep. Mina said. Support Studio Lab B. Momo had approached Midoriya's room last night, but booked it the second she heard Kasumi. Jarvis. Yes Madam Yoyorozu. What's Midoriya's favorite breakfast place? Momo asked, she couldn't cook at all, but she had money and was up before everyone. Sir frequents Krispy Kreme fresh glazed on his busy days. Jarvis said. But the closest one is on the other side of town Momo shouted, I'll never get there and back before class. How does Midoriya get those on a busy day? Sir does possess the ability to fly. Jarvis said, there's a dinner across from the school that has a breakfast sandwich he has ordered more than once. He has called their donuts good enough when they are received. Thanks Jarvis. Momo shouted rushing out. It was next morning she arrived to the support room armed with the glazed confectionaries, a bag with sandwiches and a cup holder with what Jarvis said Midoriya usually got. Momo knocked on the door and power loader, blurry eyed and not even wearing his helmet answered. Are you here for Midoriya? He asked. I was just bringing him some breakfast. Momo said. Good. He's here until the bell rings. Anything to keep him in disarming distance of Hatsume. Power loader said helping her in. She saw the two at a holidable going over a blueprint. The bags under their eyes and the sheen of grease on their face had been outstaged by Midoriya current wearing a body tight suit. He's shirtless but the undersheath is out and he's wearing his gloves and boots. Hey Yoyorozu. Midoriya walked over. Momo blushed when her fellow class rep had accepted the box from her hand and had to lean over her to set them down. What brings you round? Izuku asked. I, uh, I was wondering if you wanted any help with your, whatever it is you're working on. Momo said, I can help with a few parts as long as this isn't something. That'd be great. He said, get a pair of gloves and goggles on. Momo nodded. Momo looked at the hologram and asked okay what, exactly are we working on? A multi-stage space outpost. 
Izuku said, usually we just launch one of these at a time, but we're currently at a very good opportunity and can't wait for another chance. Momo watched as a hologram of the solar system replaced the blueprint. Okay so Fitch 16 is currently closer to Mars than ever. If we wait to launch it will take almost a year to haul it back, and even longer to get the proper industry up there. Izuku said zooming out Mars is in a position where if we time it right we can drop a drone, catch the asteroid and slingshot around Mars. Momo eyes widened as she saw the simulation of the rocket breaking apart after leaving Earth, and leaving a piece to floating onto the moon. Then a second part broke sending it into Mars, and the tip hit the asteroid. I think you're forgetting something. Power Loader said, where are you gonna get the cable long enough to basically turn Mars moon into a pitching machine? Bio cable is light enough. Izuku said. Why even do this? Momo asked, I mean you can just gather more asteroids. Why is it so important to get this specific one? About $10,000 quadrillion dollars worth of metal. Izuku said. Momo paled. Her father was a trillionaire and practically owned the majority of Japan. Midoriya was going after enough money to own the damn planet. Thought that's, that's a good reason. She said. Split evenly between Hatsume Incorporated and Stark Industries. Izuku said. You have my full help. Momo exclaimed, it would be an honor to partake in this mission. Alright. Mei said, now who are you again? Momo Yoyorozu. Momo said, my quirk lets me build things using the lipids in my body. Momo you and I are gonna make so many beautiful babies. With Zuzu will change the world. An arm was wrapped around her. Momo gulped. Later. Aizawa was looking over the class where's problem child and Yoyorozu. We don't know. Yida said. I think I saw her leaving the diner across the street. Tokoyami said, she had a lot of donuts and coffee. Maybe she's talking to Midoriya, Ruby. Sue said. Jarvis said he was working with Mei last night. Mina said. Azawa pulled out his walkie, hey power loader are my students over there. You know racer I can't let Midoriya and Yoyorozu back there needed cleaning something for me. Power loader said. What happened? Azawa asked. Oh it's really important. Might take a few hours, but I can assure you it's vital to keep Yoyorozu and Midoriya here for it. Power loader said. Okay. Azawa said flatly before hanging up. Power Loader was probably just trying to keep his best and most dangerous student from blowing the place up. Okay going over news, there's no news. Sit at your desk till first period. Azawa rolled over and the students started talking. What do you think daddy's up to? Mina asked. If Mei and Yamomo is in on it then it's gonna be important. Rupert. Sue said. A three-way between Yoirozu and Hatsume, Mineta said, Jesus that lucky bastard. What could they be making? Ida asked more to himself. Hopefully more space stuff. Mina said, or maybe it's my xenomorph transformation. That seems more biological process not mechanical. Ida said, a bead of sweat going down his face. I'm sure Deku wouldn't want to rush that. Kasumi said, you should take his time with that. A lot of time. Maybe years. Maybe never. Hopefully it's just space shit he's doing with Ponytail and Pinky. I often look to the vast darkness above our heads and wonder of what lurks beyond. Tokoyami said. Next week. And the. ZZZ. Midnight turned around to see who was interrupting her. Oh it appears one of my darling students decided they need a nap. Midnight said. I think that's more Midoriya's fault, Rupert. Sue said. Midnight turned to see the dead-eyed face of class 1 armor genius. And what has Midoriya been oh my goodness. Midnight screamed. What happened? Midnight said. We find Miss Midnight. Izuku said, we just have a very, very important project that needs to be done before. Well part of. Air work is long hours it is good to get used to long periods of staying awake. Izuku cut her off. Sweetie I know you're tired, but the last person to interrupt me did not sit for a week. Midnight said running a finger over her whip. And the last bitch who, yawn threatened me is, the last bitch who, fuck. Izuku blinked one eye after the other bark bitch. Turning towards the others. Kasumi blushed woof. That one. Izuku said. Midnight raised an eyebrow Kasumi. We'll discuss this after class. For now. But the practice finesse she had hit Momo's desk caused her to jump up, and suddenly a flood of circuit boards and bolts came flying out her skin. Sensei I Momo was looking around. Pay attention. Midnight said. After class. Midnight had Izuku and Momo stay behind. So what's going on? You two look like a racerhead. Space stuff. Momo muttered important, time, thin. Izuku removed his glasses and took a deep breath. There's something major coming up. If we miss the window we will lose a lot of money and time on this project. And what exactly is it? Midnight asked, sitting on her desk. Ass, ass, Momo tried to finish Big Space Rock. Here just, Jarvis tell her. Izuku said slouching in his seat as he handed her his glasses. Oh these are interesting. Midnight said looking around. Hello Madam Kayama, sir has granted temporary clearance for Project Jericho. Midnight watched the simulation of the rocket launch and the plan. So you two are planning to basically capture an asteroid and send it near Earth with a massive kumshot. 
Midnight asked. Yes, Momo said, but we need per, per, very ak, ak, we need it to be good. Midnight had started laughing, I ain't even mad. That's glorious. I've been up for almost two weeks working on this. Izuku said, Momo has been a fucking blessing on this project. Mumu help. Just, ass. Momo just collapsed on her desk. Okay you two need this. Midnight said, I'll punish you two after you bikaki the asteroid belt. Mumu help. Momo said falling asleep. Izuku fell asleep leaning back in the chair, arms crossed head down. So Jarvis what else you got on these things? Midnight asked. Thursday. Aizawa had announced the tournament since the two that he specifically assigned for this shit was missing. When the students were dismissed a group of students from 1B and the Janet were gathered. And walked at Suka Kendo Mr. Aizawa. Yes. Midoriya and Yuirozu didn't show up to our Wednesday meeting. Kendo said, did Midoriya get killed? Why do you ask that specifically? Aizawa asked. Well the SJ attack and well. Midoriya and Yuirozu are currently in the custody of Midnight. Something she refused to elaborate on, but she insisted on it. Aizawa said, and no Midoriya isn't dead or injured. She nodded and walked out. Pulse. Class 1 had started arguing with the other classes. Well more Kasumi versus Monoma being the main one. Kendo walked over and was ready to stop Monoma when a girl from class 1B walked up. Where's the green one? She asked. Deku's busy. Kasumi said. Kasumi stopped as the effect of her quirk started. Where is he now? The fuck if I know extra. Kasumi said flatly. Shinso. Kendo said walking over. He's with Midnight. Oh god. Was the majority response. Look she's a teacher here she isn't gonna. Kendo couldn't finish that sentence. Deku's a grown man he can handle Kasumi started. A metrics fuck ton of sexy. The goddess given flesh. The 18 plus zero. Stop interrupting me, extras. Kasumi shouted. Daddy's busy. Shoko said. Oh ho ho. It's daddy is it. Tokage asked floating her head over the crowd and towards Shoko. Hey haven't seen you or Yoyorozu in a while. Hi Tokage. Shoko said. You know her? She's one of the recommendation students. Shoko said. We met when daddy was sleeping on the couch. Wait what? Kasumi asked. Midori installed the smart home, Rupert. Sue said. Shit I completely forgot he told me he built the dorms. Kasumi thought of course I knew that extra. I didn't know he met this bitch. Woke up with my face in his and reached to cop a feel. Tokich said, didn't know he was that down for a whole harbunk. So your class president is a hubunk Monoma got knocked out by the massive fists. I am so sorry. Monoma had the idea to do this, and the class kind of followed. Kendo said folding her hands go. All of you. The students walked off. Monoma is, Kendo started difficult to rein in. You should talk to Midoriya. Mineta said, he's got Bakugo's glorious ass under lock and bang. Mineta got thrown through five walls by an explosive kick. He's kinda right. Jiro said getting a glare from Kasumi. The airjack hero moved behind Kirishima and continued Midoriya seems to got you trained like a dog. Deku doesn't have anything on me. Kasumi shouted. He got you to bark like a dog in Midnight's class. Mina said, maybe daddy can help you training your blonde bitch. Kendo had actually seemed to think it was a good idea. What do you think is his secret? Well the fact Kasumi doesn't flinch around Midori rules out physical violence. Ida said rubbing his chin, I don't know what act could get her to shift into such a docile state. Wait I know. Toru said, he's who. Don't finish that sentence in Visichik. Kasumi shouted sparking all four limbs. Wait so him and her, Kendo made a circle and pointed into it. Kasumi's face was pink and she has continued shouting denial. Midnight's office next day. Izuku, Momo and Mei had been collected the day before and knocked out by midnight. Izuku felt something and shot up first. What happened? Izuku looked around. Yawn, did I fall asleep? Mei asked. Momo got up last what time is it? Friday. Midnight said, using a nail file. Mei had jumped up, we're behind schedule. We. Mei we're going at a good pace. Izuku said, we were burning ourselves out with everything. But we only have one shot at this. Mei said. We can get it done in time Mei. Izuku said. Miss Midnight I'm sorry for falling asleep. Momo said bowing, if you allow Yus to finish the project first I will take any punishment you feel we deserve. Midnight raised an eyebrow. Really? You'll take the full punishment? Momo nodded. Okay, you three are free for now, but the day that probe goes up, Mama's gonna have some fun. Midnight said, here's your glasses back. Izuku accepted them and they left. Next week Wednesday. It was morning, and Aizawa was surprised to see Midoriya and Yoirozu actually there for the morning. Well I'm glad the two of you decided to finally show up for homeroom. Aizawa said. We're almost done on Jiriko. Izuku said, if it wasn't literally the only chance at this I wouldn't have let it interfere with my schoolwork. And mind telling me exactly what it is you're working on? Aizawa asked. Space stuff. Momo and Midoriya said. Aizawa gave them a look. It's, it's better we wait till it's actually out of range of anyone that would compromise this. 
Izuku said. What are you making? Is it a spaceship a space station a Death Star? Mina asked. Mina I'm gonna need a PowerPoint to explain why I'd never make a Death Star. Izuku said, space stuff that a lot of people would try to get their hands on or stop just so I can't do it. I need a full explanation afterwards you two. Aizawa said. The two nodded. Class rep meeting. Glad you two are back. The rep from 1C said. Yeah we've been busy. Izuku said. Ida Keith's Hatsume out of blast range I'm good man. Have you considered working with me? Momo said, she seems so nice working with us. Cheese, the vice representative started rubbing the back of their head. Different. The rep finished. She has energy and a lack of personal space. Momo said, but she's actually fun to work with. She's all yours pal. They finished. Glad you guys are back. Kendo said, let's get on with this meeting. Right onto old business. Momo said looking though her notes, sorry I missed last week. I'm not. Izuku said, alright the tournament is gonna be different this year, so the involvement of the reps are gonna be minimal. Please remind me about the 5 gadget limit. The 1C said. May already has hers. Izuku said, please ensure all students have the opportunity to prep for the day. Tetsutetsu had the iron supplements. Kendo said. I have the things for 1A. Midoriya said Momo I'd suggest a light breakfast and dinner before. Just don't eat till the day of. Okay. Momo said. Azawa lost an eye from the slam in yesterday. Izuku walked into class with a metal case. When asked by the other students he just brushed them off. Heard about your eye. Izuku said. Yes problem child, I lost my eye in that fight. Aizawa said, we all get injured in this line of work. Yeah, but there's no point in you looking like a homeless Aden. Izuku said holding up the case, I got the fix right here. Is it some kind of cyber guy? A high tech visor. The gun with his cork in it. No, no and unfortunately I'm not gonna even touch a project like that. Izuku said opening the case. Problem child mind explaining what this is? Aizawa asked. Let's try it out. Aizawa rolled his eye and looked through it. Keep going. Aizawa pulled the trigger. Had that skewed. Aizawa said pulling the trigger again. Aizawa screamed as his good eye got stabbed along with the ruined one. Aizawa's eyes turned black and started smoking. Midoriya. Sorry the laminate requires your nerves to be functioning so it doesn't blind you. Izuku said. It's like my eyes are melting. Does this violate some kind of oath? Momo asked. Above all else do no harm. I'm doing way more good than harm right now. If he can't handle a little eye melting he isn't as tough as he thinks. As the new eyes for Aizawa eyelid seemed to rip open and his quirk activated. We'll edit a photo later someone find me Aizawa with blue eyes. The class got hit with the eraser quirk. Aizawa blinked as he was getting his vision back. Why is it so bright in here? There's basically a mirror in your eyes right now. You have six times the light refraction of a human eye, so you're basically a cat right now. Izuku said. Aizawa blinked and reached for his drops, but realized his eyelids didn't feel like sandpaper. Moisturizing laminate on the eyes and lids. Izuku said grinning, no more stoner eyes and I thought you'd like the new style. Momo had attempted to make a mirror, but a court took a few moments to work before she could finally use it. Aizawa was looking at his new eyes and the closest thing the class has seen their teacher to being happy. Midoriya, Aizawa started thank you. Don't thank me, Izuku said, here's the bill. You're charging me for these, Aizawa shouted. If it makes you feel better it comes with the web shooters you bought from me. Izuku said holding up the other thing in the case. Aizawa sighed and waved over to give him the web shooter. Mei's not here to give you the full explanation, so that goes to your web dealer. Izuku said, don't swing through the city with these. If you need to scale a building they can be used for that, but I don't want you risking splattering across the concrete. Noted. Aizawa said. Tap for single shot, lung press for stream. Izuku said, this is a breathable variant of the webs, so if you need to shut someone up without suffocating them, you have options. Aizawa put on the web shooters and tried them. If this is to buy my forgiveness for the way you've been aching for the last three weeks, you're still keeping this on your record. I'm fine with that. Izuku said. Katsumi. The bombshell with tits had grabbed Deku and pulled him into a supply closet. Okay listen Deku. You spent the last two weeks with Ponytail and Pinky doing the fuck if I care. Katsumi said. I would glad Izuku started, but a palm slammed into the wall next to his head. You have the extras thinking you and I dot Katsumi couldn't finish the sentence. Are you mad we haven't or mad that they are thinking about both of us hot, sweaty and Katsumi grabbed his mouth. You making me look like, you. Katsumi said, I thought we were starting over. Izuku lifted her hand. Katsumi what's really going on? This is all so confusing. Katsumi said, you're just, fuck I can't explain it. You make me feel weird and with the whole Iron Man thing. Izuku raised his hand to move her chin up, you've been angry for a long time haven't you? You're damn right I Katsumi was cut off by a finger held to her lips. You're not used to being afraid. Izuku said. Katsumi looked into his eyes. All the damn extras, they piss me off when they talk like you and me, did that. Why are you so afraid of saying that? 
Izuku asks, we didn't fuck, but why are you acting like it would change anything? You'd still be Queen Explosion Murderell, I'd still be Iron Man, and the world wouldn't stop turning. Kasumi looked at him and said, wait have you had sex before? Yes. Izuku said flatly. What to? Not telling. Kasumi was seeing red and she had got nose to nose with him. You tell me who the skank is. Izuku leaned into the crook of her neck and licked it to her ear. Kasumi shuddered as Izuku whispered in her ear, what goes on between me and whoever it is none of anyone else's business. I don't use moments like this as a number. His hands started roaming her body. Petting and groping places slowly. This moment belongs to a scat. Kasumi had made a squeak as Izuku started kissing her neck. Deku, Kasumi said, I, I'm not ready. We don't have to do anything you don't want to cat. Izuku said, just enjoy the ride and get off when you want to. Kasumi pressed her lips to his, and time stood still. Mindscape. Angel and Devil stepped out. The console was running on autopilot. Hey ladies. An armored figure said. Where's Devil? If we're gonna do this might as well get some action. Devil Kasumi asked. The helmet retracted and she blinked oh come on. Step forward ladies there's enough of me to go around. Izuku grinned. The angel and devil looked at one another, and both got an evil grin. We doing this? Angel asked. Fuck yeah we are. Devil said before they both tackled him. Later. Momo had Izuku, Mei, Midnight, Power Loader and Ezu Limoid to Stark Industries. The lady could get used to this. Midnight sat rooting through the mini fridge. So is it ready? Power Loader asked. Yes. Izuku said, we launch today. So how's my plane coming along? Nezu asked. Also done. Izuku said. Today is the day. Thank you so much Midnight for the sleep. Mei said, you quirk makes it so we don't waste precious time for our babies. Oh I'm glad to help the threesome with their babies. Midnight said. Momo blushed and Power Loader rolled his eyes. The sight in trance. Izuku said to the driver. They pulled in and headed to an observation room. We're launching first, but there's something else later. Inko. Her son had called her telling her she'd be picked up soon. The ride was uneventful, but when the driver pulled up to industrial complex, there were three other limos. Out of one walked a couple everyone in Japan knew. The Yoirozu family. I can't find a picture of Momo's dad, so find an anime character that would fit. The next were two people Izuku had told her about. Hatsume's parents. The last was a businessman. Why will we call? The sight of something blasting off into the sky had interrupted the conversation. What was that? I hope Izuku wasn't on that. Inko said. Or me. Mrs. Hatsumi said. Does anyone know why we are here? Inko asked. I got a call from my daughter about something important she wanted to show us. Isabella Yorosu, wife of the richest man in Japan and mother of Momo said. May told me the same. May's father said. I got a call from some rich boy wants to buy Southwest Airline. The guy in the suit said, the company is dying and I'd I can get some sap to get rid of it, it's a good day. I wouldn't touch that airline if you paid me. Marcus Yorosu said. The gate opened and Grant greeted them. Hey boss told me to bring you to him. Is this boss of yours? Izuku Midoriya. Grant said. Wait does Izuku own this place? Inko screamed looking around. It was a lot different a few months ago. Grant said. Excuse me that's your son correct? Isabella asked. Yes he's in the hero course at UA. Inko said. So that's how he knows my daughter. Isabella said. Wait aren't you the guy with that manufacturer quirk? May's father asked. Yes my quirk uses my bobo's tissue. Mr. Yorozu said, my daughter's uses her lipids and doesn't have the heat problem. Oh god my daughter and yours in the same room is a recipe for something incredible. May's father said. What is this? Some kind of nuclear reactor. Grant said, I have no fucking idea how it works. I'm a construction worker not a nuclear technician. Izuku built a tiny one with $60 of material. Inko said, I have a tiny one running my house. Wait your son built a nuclear reactor with $60. Mr. Yorozu asked. They walked into a theater room with a few people already in it. Nezu. Good seeing you my good mammal. Mr. Yorozu said. Likewise. T. Nezu asked. What is going on? Inko asked. Hatsume, Midori and Yorozu have spent the last three weeks on. Power loaders started, but Midnight made a shush motion. Midnight. Isabella nodded. Hey Lus I missed the last pool party. Midnight said. Don't call me that. Isabella said. The lights went down and out walked the three. Inko had barely recognized her son. His hair was ragged, and his chin was covered with a five o'clock shadow. He was dressed in an old shirt and jeans, but the look in his eyes said it all about the last few weeks. Momo what happened to you Isabella shouted, you look like death and what are you wearing? Hello mother. Momo said, I had to borrow a few clothes from me. Have you been eating Mr. Yorozu asked about to get up. Yes but I've been using my quirk probably more in two weeks than I have in my life. Momo said. Hi daddy. May waved. What's going on Nezu? Yorozu shouted. You'll see. Nezu said sipping his tea. 
Please everyone just wait till the ending for questions. Izuku said Stark Industries and May Hatsume Incorporated have begun its next step to the stars. The room went dark and the screens turned on. 1969 Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon and called it one small step for man one giant leap for mankind. Momo said. Well May Hatsume Industries says that giant leap was too fucking long ago. May said. America spent 28 billion to put one man on the moon and shouted we're done trying well, Stark Industries would like to say, Izuku said, we're not. Humanity has sat on its fat ass on its little marble and decided to focus completely on quirks. Momo said, but whereas there's an open market there's a lack of other dipshits in the way. With the combined efforts of May Hatsume Incorporated, Stark Industries and Momo, we've gotten our most ambitious project off the ground. May continued. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jericho. Izuku said as the screen changed. The screen showed the rocket launch. The parents watched mesmerized as the screen showed the onboard camera breach the atmosphere. Momo did you build a Mr. Yorozu started, but Izuku held up a finger. This boy is either brain dead or has to carry his balls on his back. Isabella thought. Yurko is a multi-stage rocket, with the goal of beginning our monopoly on the rest of the solar system. Izuku grinned. Stage 1 will break off in the Earth's debris field, or as I prefer to call it, the space junkyard. Izuku said. This stage will harvest damaged satellite fragments, and capture smaller fragments to tow it to the Hatsume Moon Foundry. Momo said. Stage 2 will break off and begin remote construction of May Hatsume Moon Foundry. May said, along with Stark Industries' deep crust scanner drones, we will have a functional moon base by the time Stage 4 does its job. Stage 3 is a group of Stark Industries' deep crust scanner drones, which will locate the best locations to plant the first Mars mining outpost. Izuku said. Stage 4 will attach to Psyche 16 and tether it to Mars Moon. Momo said, the spin of the moon will slow the asteroid's current path, and with Repulsor assistance, we can get it within man fight range within six months. Mama. Your son's officially an astronaut. Izuku said questions. I have a few. Lunch Yue. Kasumi was for the first time not annoyed at everyone. So what happened between you and Midori? Mina asked leaning on Kasumi. You know what? That's between me, Deku and the janitor's closet. Kasumi said. Oh come on I know what you like and bet I wanna know you and the jolly green genius. Mina said. That's too bad. Kasumi said smiling. Deku's right this fun. What's going on? Toru asked. Something happened between the class bombshell and iron hunk. Mina said. What happened? She won't tell me. And she's not acting like the chick I slept with. Mina said. Who? Toru asked. You're gonna have to explain that to me. No I don't think I will. Kasumi said. We both tried to talk to Midori one night and ended up sleeping in his bed. Mina said. You two slept with Midoriya. Kendo asked walking over. We slept with each other. Kasumi said, daddy was busy with ponytail and pinky. You seemed less stressed. Kendo started trying not to set Kasumi off. I'm feeling less stressed. Kasumi smirked, but that's none of your business. Kendo looked at her and said, so on to what I came here for. Since you have the highest villain points you get to give the opening speech at the tournament. Sweet. Kasumi said. Seriously what happened? Mina said. Not telling. Kasumi said. Subtilty and stability. You can get through nearly anything. So where is Midoriya? Kendo asked. Last I heard he was working on something called Project Jericho. Mina said. The sound of a lunch tray hitting the floor got their attention. Project what a girl with vines shouted. Jericho. Kasumi said actually curious about the surprise. The girl had started muttering something about salvation and mercy. What's the problem? The biblical city of Jericho was attacked by the Israelites after they crossed the Jordan River and entered Canaan. The wall of Jericho was destroyed when the Israelites walked around it for seven days carrying the Ark of the Covenant. She said. Now we don't know exactly what he's doing, but I'm sure Midoriya isn't making something that would put us in danger. Achako said. Wait he's been doing space stuff with Mayday and Momo. Mina said, so it's probably something to do with that. What if he's making some kind of space laser? Or some kind of orbital attack station? Or maybe some space internet for porn? Mineta said. Actually sir has that project lined up. Jarvis said from Kendo's phone. Wait Jarvis. Mina asked. The fuck is Deku's AI butler doing on your phone fister? Kasumi said. I am acceptable to all UA students. My application should be on all your school emails. Jarvis said. Wait so Midoriya just lets any extra use his butler? Mina asked. That's gotta be a huge security risk. Mineta said. Anyone logging into the wrong porn site could cause a problem. Actually I am Jarvis not Jarvis. Jarvis said. What? The group asked confused. I am actually a lesser AI made by Jarvis for handling the UA's students and faculty. Jarvis said, so you're Javis Jr. Tokich said while wow, already starting the Terminators. Shiazaki had fallen to her knees and just started begging to be spared. Sir has put multiple contingencies in the even of such an emergency. Jarvis said. 
What a master kill switch, Mina asked. If planning to kill humanity equals don't, Jarvis said. That's it, the group shouted. That is all that is needed, Jarvis said. Line break. The group of inventors, parents and the representative of Southwest Airlines currently were walking to a field. This but no guns and less armor. Introducing the future of air travel and bulk shipping, Izuku said to Pelican. They entered to sea and mostly empty. Sorry about the lack of spinning rims, but we got a bar. Izuku said pressing a button on a remote and the wall unfolding and the floor lifting up a counter. Stark Industries Repulsor engines run completely on our arc fusion reactor and can keep a continuous fully loaded flight for 10 years. Izuku said. How much does this cost? The rep from the airline asked. The conversion would run you 2 billion per engine, but you'll never pay for fuel again. Izuku said. And the fact of Boeing 747 costs 8 billion a year to fuel, Momo started cheekily. How fast can you get the engine conversion? Mr. Yuirozu asked. Probably before next Christmas. Izuku said, but if I could get in contact with an existing aerospace company with trained engineers. And own an airport, May continued. Let me call my higher-ups. The rep said turning to the door, wait are we already flying? Smooth right? Izuku asked grinning bolt engine configuration allows vertical takeoff and landing. I have so many calls to make when we land. Mr. Yuirozu said. We both do dear. Isabella said. So, you know what you're buying, Izuku said, anyone in? Line break. After returning to UA the three students hit the showers. We fucking did it. Izuku shouted. Momo nodded and was about to head to the stalls, but May pulled her to the same shower room as Izuku walked into. Uh what are we? Victory shower. May said lifting Momo's shirt off. Uh I, Momo said stumped for words. Come on we can save time by cleaning one another. May said, our baby worked. Momo entered and was lifted by Izuku. The warm water and the warm embrace felt nice. Jarvis set a timer. Five minutes per cycle. May shouted. Momo was pulled into a kiss, and the nerves went down the drain. Midori residence. Mitsuki had been invited over to watch the event with Inko. Due to a surprising amount of people already getting seats they couldn't go. They all were waiting to figure out who the quickest student was. You see the news? Mitsuki asked. Izuku is already getting attention for being in the hero course. Inko said, my baby's grown up so fast. Boys definitely got his dad's genes. Misuki said seeing Izuku in a sweeping of the students my godson went from a fishbone to a hunk. I know and I'm worried if I'm gonna get a call telling me I'm a grandmother. Inko said. He sure grew up good. Misuki said. Yeah, Inko said frowning. Hey why the face? We both nailed it. Misuki said. I think I pushed my baby away. Inko said, ever since he turned 17 he just grew up so fast. He's already doing so much I think he doesn't want to be around me. Hey the brat's the same way. Last time she asked me for anything was how to work a pole. Misuki said, we gave M wings let M fly. Inko was quiet as the first race started. Izuku is Iron Man. Inko said. Nani the fuck Mitsuki shouted. He built a nuclear reactor out of scrap and a powered suit. Inko said. Oh my daughter's gonna be pregnant before she comes home. Misuki said, what do you want to name the kids? Inko put her head in her hands and made a noise. Holy shit. Misuki shouted. Inko looked up to see Izuku standing over a broken giant robot, with his hands glowing red and steam coming off him. So he's paying for the wedding. Misuki asked as Kasumi was close with Endeavor's daughter not far behind. My baby's grown up. Inko said. The door was heard unlocking it and walked. Hisashi. Inko got up and rushed over. Inko. Hisashi lifted her up and pinned her to the door. Inko had gotten lost for a second till the TV announced the winner of the race. Hey Izuku made it in. Hisashi said, oh hey Mitsuki didn't see you there. Hey go back to your reunion we're recording this. Misuki said pointing to the TV, while her phone was also recording the two. The relationship between the two just seemed so entertaining to Mitsuki. The two had a weird chemistry. I wanna see my son in action. Hisashi said walking over to the couch. Endeavor. The number two hero was watching as his future son-in-law won the race. Shoko had blocked his phone number, and Nezu had refused to allow him to know which one was the quirkless student. The beginning of the race Shoko froze the starting line, and rather than use the advantage the boy had kicked the ice, so the rest of the students could compete. A waste of time if his goal was to actually get anywhere in this tournament. That blonde girl's speech about how she was gonna win was amusing till he saw her quirk. I have a son somewhere don't I? Maybe I can try to arrange something. Endeavor had gotten a message from All Might about something he wanted to talk about. Something he only said was important. Tashinori. I watched young Midori team up with Yuirozu, Hatsume and Shinso. With his 1 million point lead Midoriya had stayed on the outer area of the cavalry battle. Yorozu and Hatsume seemed to be working together well. Midoriya's latest project must have really helped their cooperation, and from how Yorozu was making devices, the time in the support department has really gone far. 
Shinso was the outlier of the group however. Due to her being the lightest she was the one being carried. Also she being the last to finish she had a negative value headband. The crowd watched the scarves get counted, and surprisingly Izuku's score hadn't gotten the negative. Midnight held up the one dark shadow swiped, and it had red paint on it. Each of these have RFID chips. This is the negative 1000 painted. Momo held up a bottle of paint she made and struck a pose that had the grins from Mei and Izuku making so much sense. Shinso looked completely shocked. Is that allowed? One person in the students shouted. The rules state you have only your quirks to rely on. Midnight said. Did, did we just get first? Shinso asked looking between the score and her team. We sure did. Izuku said. All Might smiled. A logical ruse and dirty tactics. Nezu and Aizawa should be proud. Eraser had you're smiling. I'm just so proud of my kids. The class one a teacher said. Are you crying? Present Mix shouted. World's a beautiful place ain't it? Aizawa said. All Might could hear the stomping and clapping from Nezu in another viewing booth. The squeaks of laughter from the principal was a rare but enjoyable sound. All Might folded his glasses and changed form. Line break. Shinso was meeting up with 1B as they waited for the matchups to be announced. That was a dirty trick. Shizaki said. Well done baby. A severed hand rubbed her purple hair. We're the same age. Shinso said. But you're the baby. Tokuch said. Big sis is proud. Kendo said. Shinso was the youngest. She also was the only student who got in on it technically. She had originally got 1.2 low, but since one student had been tested and found with a vial of trigger, she was the closest to get a we need a filler. She had gotten three robots in the entrance test, and it was only cause Tetsu Tetsu was in the middle of the street shouted, bring it. And the robots actually following him. Shinso was not an active person. She wasn't flabby, but she couldn't even claim to be fit enough to last against someone like Kendo, and from the way Midoriya was a wall of muscle and confidence she'd get flattened by him. Shinso watched the board appear to be loading, and she had fallen to her knees with Shizaki. Lord, I know I don't ask for much, or anything really, but if you can give me someone, someone who doesn't know my quirk, I will do anything to thank you. Get the fuck up. A voice said causing her to jump out her skin. Standing above her was the same green-haired boy who got her here. Midoriya. Kendo said. Hey. He said, I just got back from a discussion from the teachers. Kendo you might want to give this to Tetsu Tetsu. It was an injector with Fei written above his skull and crossbones. What is this? About five lethal doses of injectable iron supplement. Izuku said, it would kill anyone who uses it except. Someone with a quirk that specifically runs on iron. Tokuch said. Why would you? Shinso started. Izuku grinned as the tournament list appeared, and it showed Izuku was forced to face two people due to the numbers. Tetsu 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 vs. Ajiro Kirishima vs. Izuku Midoriya. You're giving your enemies something to fight you better. Shizaki asked. Well unlike me and Kirishima I know Tetsu Tetsu needs something to keep him harder. Izuku grinned, might as well give him a fair fight. Oh I get it, class A is gonna stick together. Tokuch said. No I already told Kirishima if he pulls a single punch I'm gonna grind him into sand. Izuku said, it's not A vs B it's them vs V. They all looked at each other while Midoriya walked off. Hubers will be his downfall. Shizaki said shaking her head. As they found their seats they saw All Might jump down. Before the battles begin I believe this is the time to say this. All Might said, my recent announcement to the media is true. I'm retiring the All Might title. The crowd had gasped and whispered between one another. However this doesn't mean I'm out of the game. All Might said holding up a finger I've been doing this for 30 years, and for the last 20, I forgot what got me to number 1. The clip from his first reveal had been played. Something the majority of the crowd has seen before. This man you see has been buried under whore. I spent so long on slinging shit for sponsors who would rather civilians die if it meant that I'd miss a body wash commercial. All Might face twisted into a scowl I've lost a person in that video. I've put image before the duty of a hero. I've put my health at risk. All Might lifted his shirt and the lines from the injury was shown. Many gasped and many puked when an image of his buff form with a much darker scar was revealed. I lost half my respiratory system six years ago and instead of finding someone to help I let image get in the way. All Might said, but last year I got the sense beaten back into me, and for six months I had someone who actually had the ability to fix me. To put me back together. All Might started chuckling. To the fucker who did it to me, I know you can hear me, I'm completely healed, I'm feeling better than I've been, and unlike before, All Might let out another laugh, you're not getting the luxury to hide behind my fans. I'm renewing my hero license and gonna be working under a new name in the underground. Villains aren't getting the privilege to see me coming. The crowd all looked around. The title of number one was achievement no doubt, but it's gotten too much a hindrance to me. All Might said so is my final words as number one I say this. The crowd was on the edge of their seats. Students, show the world the next generation of heroes. Villains, watch your backs. And Endeavor, congratulations on number one. All Might said clapping as Endeavor was showed on the camera shocked. 
the crowd cheered as All Might walked off. Endeavor's shocked face would be on every news station and meme it to heaven and back. Well now first up in the tournament. We got a three-way between two rocks and a hard place. Midnight said, she really said that. A group of people said thought. Tetsu 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 from Class 1B. Midnight gestured to a gate in Ijiro Kirishima from Class 1A. The two metapods walked to the field. And our genius playboy inventor. Midnight said, the representative of Class 1A. Izuku Midoriya. Midnight shouted as Izuku walked out. The crowd cheered for both, but Izuku was waving his arms hyping the crowd further. Tetsu Tetsu leaned over to Kirishima, is this a good idea? Isn't he, you know? It's fine. Kirishima said. Tetsu Tetsu was definitely feeling conflicted. It wasn't manly if he wasn't fighting fair. Having performance issues boys. Midnight asked. If you're nervous you can walk out and let the real men fight. Izuku said, you're the only one here who needs a little blue pill to get harder. He's just as bad as Midnight. I can take both of you on. Tetsu Tetsu shouted flexing, I got enough iron in me. Kirishima if you throw a single punch at him you're cleaning every toilet in the dorm for a week. Izuku shouted. You heard him man. Kirishima said, it's us versus him. The two activated their quirks, and Midnight started the fight. Begin. Midnight shouted. Izuku ran in and kicked off Kirishima's chest and punched Tetsu Tetsu in the nose. The steel warped, red leaked out his nose, and his whole body rang like a gong. The crowd watched the steel cork user sway and fall to his knees. Convince. Kirishima asked before a fist had hit him in the stomach. Stance. Kasumi watched shitty hair 1 and 2 get beat up. Of course Deku fighting these two was gonna only have one outcome. Man Midoriya is mauling those two. It's their fault for holding back. Kasumi said. Kirishima was lifted above Izuku's head. And Kirishima is gonna need a trip to the medical wing. When the limp body of Kirishima was kicked into Tetsu Tetsu the shaking finally stopped. Bro, Kirishima said softening before rehardening help. Me. Tetsu Tetsu nodded and both rushed Midoriya. Izuku grabbed Tetsu Tetsu's wrist pulled him down and slammed his elbow into his face. He flowed into hooking his arm around the class 1 b-boy's neck and twisted to slam him into Kirishima. We're here to show heroes what we got. You claim you stand for manliness, but all I'm seeing is two marshmallows. Izuku said. I'll show you a marshmallow. Tetsu Tetsu shouted before his cork ran out. Crap. You're out of iron. Izuku said figures. Looks like Tetsu Tetsu is out of iron folks. His quirk is burned out. Tetsu Tetsu looked down at his hands and started to shake. Tetsu Tetsu you were given something before the match right? Midnight asked. Tetsu Tetsu looked over. Izuku gestured to the screen and the formula was shown. Attention students that vial has been cleared with recovery girl and checked by the teachers to only contain the iron supplement. Nezu said over the speakers. You were allowed to use it. But, Tetsu Tetsu started. We're here to show what we got. I know you'd burn your cork out long before us. Izuku said quit being a wimp and use it. And you've been holding back too. No, I haven't. Kirishima shouted, I'm giving it my all. No, you aren't. You're still holding back. Izuku said deflecting another swing and push kicking him back. You're both acting like wimpy, unmanly marshmallows. Tetsu Tetsu and Kirishima had both glared, and something just went off in both their eyes. Fine I'll use it. Tetsu Tetsu said taking out the injector. Tetsu Tetsu jammed it into his hip and gasped as his quirk had more fuel than ever. Kirishima body seemed to go limp as he closed his eyes and started his quirk. His body tensed, and both began to push their quirks to their limits. Let's get it. Kirishima shouted. Tetsu Tetsu body was covered again but not in a single color. The wavy pattern of his quirk was new, but he hadn't even noticed. Bring it. Tetsu Tetsu shouted as his fingers we separated into knife-like blades. Now we're getting somewhere. Izuku smirked as the three rushed each other. Stance. Of course Deku would do this. Kasumi said as class 1 and B were dumbfounded at the two's new forms. Izuku had actually started taking damage as the two had started working together. We'll show you a manly. Both shouted. Izuku got put in a master lock by Kirishima, while Tetsu Tetsu was just slashing. Izuku kicked off Tetsu Tetsu and flipped over Kirishima twisting his arms back and stomped between his shoulder blades. The sickening crack had echoed through the stadium, as both Kirishima's arms were broken. Izuku rushed Tetsu Tetsu and repeatedly headbutted him. Ding ding ding. Both boys' bodies started to quiver as their quirks finally quit. Only imagine I could find. Okay, we're done. Kirishima said bro. Bro, Tetsu Tetsu said as a shaky thumbs up before falling unconscious. Midoriya moves on to the next round. Present Mix shouted as Izuku walked off with the two to recovery girl. Back to the stance. What was that about hubris? Kendo asked Abar. Figures. Kasumi muttered. What was that? Abar asked. Deku's got a tungsten skeleton. Kasumi said, you think a rock and a lump of steel would do more than a few scratches. He really was given Tetsu Tetsu a fighting chance. Ibarra said putting her head in her hands. Did you see that shit though? Tokich said Tetsu Tetsu was all swirly. 
I believe that was called Damascus steel. Nita said, I am surprised at Kirishima's new form. Haven't seen him that hard, ever. Mina said, Daddy sure is good at making quirks better. Endeavor. First I made number one now my future son-in-law makes the others better. Endeavor thought maybe he could improve Shoko's quirk. Endeavor walked off to talk to Shoko before her match. Use my quirk. I can win without it. Shoko said stubbornly. Shoko walked onto the field. Her father had been annoying her ever since they entered the stadium. He was hellbent on finding the quirkless student and her using his quirk. Had All Might not announced his stepping down from number one Endeavor probably would have talked her ear off and given a probably rehearsed speech scolding about carrying the flame. Honestly Shoko wanted to just have Midoriya shoot a kid into her just to piss him off about his lack of a quirk. What would it look like? Shoko thought as the match was announced, and her and a girl with vines on her head walked out. Will my hair separation be with a green and red? Or maybe green and white? Shoko thought as the match started, and she activated a quirk. Hope it has Midoriya's eyes. Maybe my heterochromia would show up and they'd have my mom's eye and Izuku's. Todoroki moves on to the next round. Shoko looked and the girl was frozen in a block of ice. Shoko took a breath and put a hand on the ice to melt it. How did Midoriya heat up his hands to cut those robots? I know he has the extra miss, but how could it make a human body hot enough to melt iron? Couldn't Midoriya just melt that metal Kirishima skin then? Shoko walked into the hall and saw Midoriya about to enter the boys' locker room. Hey Midoriya can I ask you something? Sure what's up? Izuku asked. How come you can melt the robots but not the metal Kirishima? Shoko asked. Shoko I wasn't trying to instant win that fight. Izuku said, I was trying to get Kirishima and Tetsutetsu to go all out. Shoko nodded. That she understood from knowing him. How does your hands heat up like that? I too am also curious. Bakugo said walking out the girl's locker room. You know how the human body runs on mitochondria? Izuku asked. Powerhouse of the cell. Both said. While well, a human body can heat up to about 108 degrees Fahrenheit before dying, and there's about 1,000-2,000 mitochondria per cell. Izuku said. Okay, Shoko said. Your metabolism runs at different speeds, so if you say increase oxygen intake and speed up your heartbeat, you can push them to work harder. Izuku said. Following so far. Bakugo said. Now what would happen if say instead of 2,000 you have 50,000? Izuku said now instead of 108, I can make about 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. The melting point of steel is 2,600 give or take. How come it doesn't kill you? Bakugo asked. My cells regenerate at a cancerous level. Even if a few extra are dying I replace them faster anyway. Izuku said. But wouldn't that mean you'd get cancer easier? Shoko asked. Why aren't you a walking tumor? Bakugo asked. I have about 100 extra tumor suppressor genes and a gene drive to make sure no cell mutates. Izuku said, unless I go streaking in Chernobyl me and every child I shoot into someone will never get cancer. Wait, didn't they use that gene drive shit to stop mosquito? Bakugo asked wait are your kids gonna become corkless? No I haven't done anything to that part of the genome yet. Izuku said crossing his arms and leaning against the door. Yet both girls shouted. Yeah I could probably give myself a quirk if I found the right one. Izuku said, I'd need some kind of energy stockpiler though. I can change my genetics, but I can't alter the Q factor. Could, could you give me a different quirk? Shoko asked. Could you remove the quirk? Bakugo asked looking as if she was staring at death itself. I could put it in a strain for rhino flu and turn the planet quirkless. Izuku said seriously before smiling, but why would I do that? And Shoko your quirk is fine. Bakugo had turned pale as she walked off to her first match against Ichako. Izuku tapped his phone. Ichako. The female Kirby had been trying to steady her breathing. Her phone rang and she looked at the text. Deku. Hey you need help. Ichako. Nah I can do this on my own. Deku. Solid. Kiss ass. Deku. Kick. Ichako. Ichako turned off her phone and took another deep breath. You can do this. You can do this. Izuku. The inventor was grabbing a drink when he saw All Might in thin form munching on a chocolate bar. Young Midoriya. Why did Jarvis give me a note saying God damn it Midoriya? Izuku asked. Good imitation. Tashinori said so. If this is important you can tell me. Tashinori heard in his head. What the fuck? All Might shouted in English. The glasses have a phone feature. Silent communication. Izuku said. Tess tess, Tashinori said. Shit what didn't you put in this suit? A new respiratory system. Izuku said leaning back. Har har. Tashinori said. About the quirk. I put it off long enough. After the tournament. Izuku said. Your system called my old teacher. Tashinori said. Gran Torino right? Izuku asked. Yeah, your rebelsers are actually real similar to his quirk. Tashinori said, but I was thinking about how to actually teach you how to use the quirk and I can't. Well judging by the fact you're a human pufferfish the person before you couldn't inflate. Izuku said, so what can you tell me about it? The first use goes all out. 
Tashinori said. You're lucky you have that tungsten skeleton. Well, it's kind of required when I have nearly twice the muscles of a standard human. Izuku said. How's the quirk reaction to Extremis? Like I'm back to my prime. Not a newbie I'm talking like 5 years after graduation, top of my game, Tashinori said. It's like a dream honestly. When I'm afraid to wake up. If I woke up tomorrow as the spineless loser I was before I'd hang myself. Izuku said. Same. Tashi said. Stadium. Natasha Shinso had seen the announcement she was going against the guy that had convinced her to actually try for the her course. The guy who had used the first fight of the battle to get his opponent to go all out. The guy whose girlfriend. At least a friend she had just caused to walk right out the arena and the face she could see at the lose. The show from Hatsume turning that blue kid that had called out Midoriya day one had been amusing, but it hadn't stopped her from nearly shooting herself. Coming up Izuku Midoriya vs Satoshi Shinso, but first it's Umikage Tokoyami vs Shoko Todoroki. Momo. You did your best. Ichako tried to comfort her friend. I didn't even get to start. Momo said. You showed enough of your skills in your first fight with Kendo. Izuku said, you actually gave it your all instead of certain people. I don't need Shoko started. Shoko I swear, I will unfix that face. Izuku said pinching the brim of his nose, if I don't see one flicker in the next fight you're gonna get folded like a lawn chair. You sound like my father. Shoko muttered. Well unlike him I actually am trying to get you to actually use your core correctly. Izuku said, not just the hot part. Tokoyami vs Shoko. Shoko was still being stubborn. Who did Midori think he was? Shoko thought. Shoko. Endeavor said trying to meet her on her way to the stadium. Fuck off. Shoko said freezing him to the wall. Tokoyami watched the walking blizzard step to the arena. The shadow's icy grip grows near. Tokoyami said. Okay, when that bell starts fucking run at her. If I can get the first hit in maybe we can win. Dark Shadow said. The look on Todoroki's face had sent a bolt of extra terror down their spines. Ready? Begin. Midnight shouted. Tokoyami had felt more adrenaline running through his bones than his entire life up to that point. His muscles had actually sprained from the force he had pushed into himself. He didn't care if his bones broke getting a single hit on the This goddess of ice and fire would be enough for him. Dark Shadow dove forward and had body checked Shoko pushing her back. Come on come on. The two were thinking as Tokoyami was clawing his way on the ground to get Dark Shadow close enough. The arena was blanketed in ice just as Dark Shadow got a foot from the edge. Tokoyami was frozen, but Dark Shadow had tried to muscle through it. With as much force as he could he headbutted her, but an ice wall behind Shoko prevented her from moving. With the last swing before getting frozen solid a single drop of blood fell from her right cheek. A single drop, Dark Shadow said before being frozen. And Dark Shadow has gotten the closest to an actual fight against the Ice Princess. Present Mix shouted. Shinso vs Midoriya. Izuku was laughing as he walked out. What's so funny? Shinso asked. Izuku ignored her as Midnight asked if both were ready. Izuku nodded and Shinso nodded. Izuku had walked forward and grabbed her around the waist. Hey put me down. She kicked and screamed as he walked her to the edge. No. Stop. Fight me. Wanna hear a joke? Silence. How's your mother? Silence. How about anal? Do the clear yes and you can rail me right here on the arena. Shinso begged. Silence. They had approached the edge. And it seems Shinso is outmatched. Present Mix said. Though a strong effort to get him to respond. Midnight complimented. Shinso had kicked and slammed her fists on him. She was breaking down as his fingers loosened. No no no. She cried. This is painful to watch. Komori said. I know right. Tokuj said. As her feet hit the ground the victory was announced and Shinso was just bowling. Izuku grabbed her and pulled her closer. The crowd couldn't hear what he said but it seemed to stop her crying partly. And Shinso is out of bounds so Midoriya moves on to the next round. Present Mix shouted. Class 1B. Hitasha had walked out the stadium and was caught up by her classmates. Hitasha. Kendo shouted walking over. I lost, Shinso said. Hey we all did. Kendo said. It's not that big a deal. Tokuj said. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. The bar quoted, we all suffered a loss. Yeah you all lost to a chick who can pull a rail gun out her ass, a living shadow and a walking blizzard. Shinso said, I lost to a guy who has told everyone he was quirkless. A logical deception probably. Kendo said, he clearly has a heat quirk. No, it's really not. A voice said. They all jumped. Stop doing that. Ibarra shouted. Pay attention. Izuku said flatly, and I'm really quirkless. Oh. Shit. Tokuj said. Your hands heated up enough to melt steel. Kendo said. So deceitful. Ibarra said. It's called science bitch. Izuku said, anyone here watch One Piece? No. The three said. Yes. Shinso said. It's like gear second. Izuku said, I can prove I'm quirkless. Oh how? Kendo said crossing her arms. 
Izuku opened his mouth and pointed to the back of it. Wait, you have extra teeth. Tokich said floating in eye to look. They're called wisdom teeth. The human mouth evolved from herbivores, and the extra teeth are often removed due to them growing in wrong. Quickless people still grow them. Izuku said, I also have an extra toe joint, a thing called an appendix, and I grow body hair. A hand floating down to his shirt and they saw chest hair. Holy shit. Language. Ibarra said. I gonna get kicked. Shinso said curling up. Look you went against someone bigger than you. Izuku said, if you were willing to stand up against the threat you know you weren't gonna win. I could have. Shinso started. No. You couldn't. Izuku said, I have hundreds of pages of notes on every quirk I've ever seen, and you've told me yours the day I met you. You keep notes on quirks. Tokaj asked, you should talk to Yui sometime. She likes analyzing quirks. Really? Izuku asked, well I'd love to bounce a few notes from one quirk and hero Taku to another. I'm the weakest in my class. Shinso said, I already have a strike from Sensei Kansas on day one. I had to wear a stupid cone hat and sash. Well if you were in one you'd have gotten kicked already. Izuku shrugged. Who? The four asked. The Aizawa booted his whole class last year, and he had been ready to boot me even if I was 10th in his test. Izuku said look you just need to actually get some fitness training and some good gear. How am I gonna do that when Sensei is already probably writing my termination papers? Shinso asked. Look when half the world is piloting your death you know you're doing good. Izuku said, Vlad's a hard ass, but he's not a monster. Izuku felt the quirk activate. Shinso was glaring at him, tell me exactly how you think I could possibly get good enough in time. I was gonna offer you health training and maybe build you a Izuku started, but then a gold coating covered his arm and swung at his face. What was that? A red mask came flying from somewhere and attached to his face. Wait, that's, Ibarra finger pointed. Shu, Izuku held a finger to his mouth as he took off the helmet, meet me tomorrow. Before walking off with the helmet tucked under his arm. Should you guy know what we just saw right? Tokaj asked. The fuck was that gold shit? The helmet just flew to him. Kendo looked at Shinso and said, he said he might build you something. Shinso eyes widened. Oh fuck he literally said he's been to space. Locker room. Izuku had waved at Mount Lady before heading off to store his helmet. Walking out Endeavor was waiting. I saw you talking with All Might. Endeavor said. And? Izuku asked. Endeavor was looking the boy over. Are you his ward? No. Izuku said flatly. Don't hold back against Shoko. Endeavor said. Don't worry I won't. Izuku said, but little tip for the future. If you want your daughter to get any farther with her quirk stay away from her. She need to learn how to use my. Her quirk. You spent five tries to get her, and you were actively putting mental blocks in her head. Izuku interrupted, her quirk won't move on unless she actually learns it's her quirk not yours. Watch your tone boy. Endeavor said. Believe me matchstick, you're not the first number one hero whose ass I've kicked, and the old one did a lot more damage. Izuku said. I could incinerate you where you stand. Endeavor said standing at his full height. You've walked right into this one I've dated chicks hotter than you. Izuku said, so take that bass out your voice, stand aside and watch me spill your daughter in half on live TV. Endeavor looked like a dragon with flames blowing out his nose. Izuku countered with a puff from his own mouth and walking off. Wonder Girls. Kasumi had been ready to blast Mineta's head off when she was tricked into putting on the cheerleader outfit. Looks like class 1 is going for a little fan service. Present Mick said. I'm gonna kill that purple piece of shit. Kasumi shouted. Take a number. Jiro said throwing down the pompoms. It's not fair. Shoko said the only girl not wearing it. Why can't I wear one? The girls looked at her. I never got to try for cheer in high school. Shoko said bowing her head. More my editing. Here's when I tried to add a smile, but I don't think it turned out right. And here's another attempt at a smile. I'll make you one later. Momo sighed, I'm the one that made these. Hey we can at least we could have fun with it. Toru said waving the pompoms. If we're gonna cheer get me a red and gold outfit. Kasumi growled out, we need Deku to win. That's the spirit. Mina said, oh Momo add lights too. Yes. Kasumi shouted. Izuku. Izuku had walked out to see something from another life. Yes the outfits look like this, but with a skirt instead of the shorts. She's wearing the outfit but using her quirk as pompoms. Jarvis. All camera feeds taking pictures and videos sir. Jarvis said. Whoever wins this moves on to the final round. Midnight shouted, will it be class 1 Ice Princess Shoko Todoroki? Or class 1 AS Playboy Izuku Midoriya? Let's give the people a show. Midnight said, Shoko are you ready? Shoko nodded. Izuku. Izuku nodded. The two students locked onto one another. Cementos and recovery girl on standby. Midnight whispered into her mic. Ready. Kick her butt Deku. Kasumi shouted. Freeze that green hunk. Shinso shouted. Shinso. The bar said. Let's lose some clothes. Tokage shouted clapping. Tokage. Kendo said. Why cheer for either. Manama said. Begin. 
Shoko started with her standard. Izuku was seen holding out his palm and the ice splitting into six pieces through his fingers, but it didn't stop him approach. Shoko moved to short bolts of ice which Izuku's with his still raised hand blocked. Izuku grabbed her wrist and the flesh blistered. Shoko had seen a second hand, heated and reaching for her face.